Hey y'all, welcome to the unit conversion video. What I would like you to do is take notes on this video. What that means is you're going to open up your binder to the notes section and title it unit conversions. All right, when we, before we talk about unit conversions, what I wanna do is talk about all the different kinds of observations we've been making this week. Last week on Thursday, we talked about types of observations. We talked about qualitative observations and we talked about quantitative um, observations, or in this case, quantitative really means some sort of measurement. We make qualitative observations of objects or perhaps a chemical reaction like on the color change challenge lab. And what we do is we note changes in color and physical state. We also make quantitative measurements, which involve numbers. And so when we talk about unit conversions, we're really going to be focusing on quantitative measurements. And the other thing that I want to note is that we're going to use SI units, which is basically the metric system for our purposes in ninth grade. Of course, when we talk about measurement and the metric system and um, what I like to call the imperial system, which would be like feet and inches and yards, we need to know that they're all standards of measurement. And we use some sort of tool, some sort of standardized tool, so um, we can compare one object to the standard. So if you look at the image on the lower left, it's an image of an architect using a standardized ruler perhaps to make sure that he's got his units of measurement correct so that perhaps when a contractor or a builder builds the structure, they're able to extrapolate that into an actual building. When we talk about the imperial method, things that we use here in the United States like inches and feet, yards, we're really talking about something that was based at one time on the king's foot, okay? So if we go back to um, the early days of England, um, the ruler, okay, literally was the ruler. But obviously there's a lot of problems with the standard as kings have come and gone, as this is hard to really come up with a standard measurement. So. Um, those measurements were standardized hundreds of years ago, but now we really, in science, just use the SI system. When we state some sort of measurement, we know that we've got a number. But a number is just that, unless if it's followed by some sort of unit from a measuring device, be it a balance or a scale or a graduated cylinder, because it really tells us what type of device we use to create that measurement. Now, the number that you record should be as precise as the tool that you use to measure it. So on a standard ruler, if you look at the metric side, you have these tiny little tick marks that each represent a millimeter. So if you wanted to measure something, let's say the size of a small bean, you could record that in millimeters, and maybe you could even measure its length down to a half a millimeter. But anything smaller than that would be unrealistic. Something like a nanometer I couldn't use with a ruler that I'd find in my classroom. So then comes to the problem of unit conversions. If I've measured something in millimeters, but I want to say, well, if it's three millimeters, how many inches is that? So we want to be able to convert between units. Or if I say I've got something in centimeters, I want to know how many millimeters it is. So we, for our purposes, like I said earlier, are only going to be using the metric system or the SI system international. Okay, so two ways that we're going to be doing unit conversions. The first way is something called the ladder method. You might have learned this in eighth grade science um, here at Parker. However, other teachers have taught this before, and I really like to only use it for conversion between metric units, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. The other method that I think is more sophisticated, and you're going to be using it this year in, in science class, but certainly in physics and CB2, is the factor label method. And really, that works for conversion between metric to metric, 
or between, let's say, the imperial to um, the metric system, okay? So the next thing that I want you to do is pause the video because you can see that we've got this image on the screen and I want you to copy it into your notes. When you're done copying it into your notes, I want you to go ahead and hit play again because we're going to fill out this ladder for the ladder, ladder method and then I'm going to explain it. So hopefully by now you've filled this out or I'm sorry, you've copied this into your notes and now what we're going to do is we're going to fill it out. The first thing that I want you to drop in is the prefix kilo. The prefix kilo means 1,000 units. Hopefully this is familiar to you guys. Uh, the prefix hecto means 100 units. Then fill in the prefix deca and all of these should be filled in the right spot and that means 10 units. The base unit, which really is meters, liters, and grams, okay, so I can say a decameter, I can say a decaliter, or I can say a decagram. They all, those prefixes, uh, get written in front of these base units. Then the next one down, I have decis, which is, I'm sorry, deci, which is one one hundredth. We have centi, which is one, I'm sorry, deci was one tenth. I take you, I take that back. Deci is one tenth and centi is one one hundredth. Milli is one one thousandth of a unit. If you need to hit pause and finish copying this down, you're free to do that. Moving on, I want you to write down how we can use the ladder, okay? So the first thing that you do is determine your starting point. Then you're going to count the jumps to your ending point. And lastly, you're going to move the decimal the same number of jumps in the same direction. So I've got an example for you because it's best explained with an example. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert four kilometers to meters. So I've got my starting point, which is four kilometers, and certainly I've got my ending point. I want to see how many meters are in four kilometers. So how many jumps does it take? Well, we know that we're going from kilo all the way down to the base unit of meters. So I've got one step, two steps, three steps down to that base unit. So now what I can do is I can write the number four with that decimal point, and then I'm going to move it three places to the right because I went down the steps. So I've got one, two, three. Fill that in with your zeros, and you've got 4,000 meters. But what good is one example when you can have multiple examples? So let's do some practice. What I want you to do is copy down these six problems and then hit pause. See if you can solve these and then hit play and you can check your work. Okay, let's convert 1000 milligrams to grams. So if you note, I've got an M, which is the prefix for milli and I've got G and G, because it has no prefix in front of it, is a base unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from milli all the way up to grams. So here I am at milli, and I'm going to end up at our base unit of grams. So I'm going to go up one, two, three steps, which means I'm going to take my decimal, which is right here on milligrams, and I'm going to move it three places to the right. One, two, three, and I get to drop in a decimal point right there, and that converts to one gram. Yay, we finished that one. Let's do liters, two milliliters. So I'm starting out at my base unit. In this case, it is liters, and I'm going to go all the way back down to milliliters. So let's count our steps, one, two, three, that means I'm going to move the decimal place over to the right three places. So I've got one. I'm going to move it one, two, three. Fill in the decimal. 
and the zeros for each step I took. So one liter equals a thousand milliliters. All right, let's move on to this one. We've got 160 centimeters and we want to convert it to milliliters. So we're going to start out at centi and we're going to go down to milli. That is one step down, which means we're going to move this decimal over one place to the right. So here's my decimal. I'm going to move it over one place. So I've got, that was kind of messy. Let's write it out up here. So I've got 160. My decimal is implied to be there. I move it over one place, drop it in, and fill in a zero. So I've got 1,600 millimeters. All right, let's go down to the next one where I've got 14 kilometers and I want to convert it into meters. You can see that I, none of these problems are tricky. We'll worry about tricky problems later. So I'm going to be up at kilo. I'm going to go one, two, three steps over to meters, meaning that I've got a 14 and I'm adding three zeros to that. And don't forget your comma. All right, next one is 109 grams. We're going to convert that to kilograms. So let's start out with our base unit of grams. Going up to kilograms, we're going to go one, two, three, meaning that we're going to move our decimal place to the left three places because we went up. One, two, three drop in our point, so I'm going to write it as 0 0.109 kilograms. Okay, last one, meters to kilometers. Again, I've got meters going up to kilometers. That is going to be one, two, three steps up. So that means I move it over that decimal to the left three places, one, two, three, and I've got 0.25, we can drop in an O, it doesn't really matter either way, kilometers. Okay, congratulate yourself on finishing all of our problems. Yay, I'm giving everybody a smiley face and let's move on to our next section. All right, 